And I saw this particular title of our last presentation for the day coming up about whether planetariums are still relevant. Um, that's a bit scary, but of course we know they are. It's just when we see the question posed. And uh, certainly it's interesting that um, we are living at a time when uh, we're emerging, at least hoping to emerge from this pandemic. We've got a mixture of activities that planetariums have been doing, running shows or remaining closed or uh, being engaged in other activities. So uh, I'll now hand over to uh, to Philip. Uh, Philip Gross here, would you like to uh, to start speaking and introducing the other uh, panelists for this session, please, the other speakers? I'm going to make this brief. David Dundee is, uh, of course, the astronomer at the Bentley Planetarium at the Telus Science Museum. Uh, it's considered the most successful planetarium and and in, uh, in the state of Georgia by and he's done just an amazing job there. But now he's open uh, during a pandemic, and so he brings that that viewpoint. Benjamin Mendelssohn is a director of the uh, Kwame Planetarium at West Valley College, and he, his planetarium is brand new. In fact, it has not opened yet because of the pandemic and it represents a state-of-the-art planetarium. And I'm gonna wrap it up with uh, just some simple reasons why planetariums are indeed still relevant. So David, take it away. Okay, can you see the title slide, everybody? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, good, good. Well, that's, that's us and, and so, um, Phil has introduced us, and so I'll move on uh, to uh, talk about our, our topic today. Are planetarium still relevant? And so during the corona era, uh, until the, uh, an effective vaccine uh, uh, comes about, we uh, continue to do planetarium shows here at TELUS. Uh, we're doing 25% uh, maximum attendance in our theater. So we're kind of in limbo right now, wondering if another shutdown is around the corner, and uh, we keep hearing about the new normal that's going to be coming any day now uh, that uh, may open many virtual doors for museums and planetaria. But through it all, the planetarium theater remains relevant because there's still a need to experience the sky. Perhaps there will be a virtual experience the sky in the future that you can do at home. Uh, maybe technology will bring that experience home. But until that time, the planetarium theater remains uh, relevant. Uh, the planetarium through decades of advance, advancement has evolved into places, well actually palaces of technology where uh, advanced concepts of the universe can be digitized and explored. Huge data sets can be crunched and transformed into images that our human brain can perceive and begin to understand. The planetarium has grown up from its infancy, some of you might remember consoles like this, uh, where uh, they had special effects projectors made from aluminum foil and baby food jars and 16 millimeter projectors and slides and colored gels and even cotolith. And, uh, and so the early planetarium projectors, they could do stunning views of the sky along with uh, all of these special effects projectors. And I, I must confess that I do miss the, uh, the, the kerchunk kerchunk in the darkness of banks of slide projectors advancing and occasionally, of course, the misfire of special effects projectors. I don't miss uh, changing lamps and changing slide trays. So I, I'm glad to see this, this becoming a dinosaur here. And for those of you who don't know what this is, an old ectographic slide projector. So, in the post-corona era that will, uh, will happen, uh, many elements of the planetarium can be displayed and shared in a variety of digital platforms. Visualizations of the evolution of the cosmos, past events, future events can all be shared uh, to home computers. Manipulation by audiences of digital content can all be done from our remote locations. Museum collections can be displayed worldwide as well online. The planetarium as a teaching tool continues to this day. Uh, in a way, uh, the, the motions of the, uh, the heavens can be displayed uh, and put in a new perspective. We can digitally take our audiences to any viewpoint in the universe to better understand the motions of planets, stars, and the galaxies. But we can do that all on a computer screen. Why does the planetarium theater still exist? 
Is it a dinosaur waiting for the final asteroid impact? Is the coronavirus the final act in the planetarium saga? I think not. The planetarium provides a stage for a good storyteller to tell stories of the night sky. Through these stories, we gain access to the imaginations of peoples and cultures around the world. The stars and the sky provide the context for these stories. Mythology of the sky are the threads of the universe and the stars provide the frame from which they hang. Through all the technology advances, the central reason for the planetarium to exist still continues to this day. We need to see the black sky studded with stars. You can't do that on a small screen. We need to be immersed into it, especially since we live in a world of rapidly expanding envelope of light pollution to see the sky, the Milky Way, the delicate deep sky objects just at the limit of our naked eye to perceive. It gives us a perspective of our human existence. And I'll pass it on to, our, to Benjamin. Good job. Well, good morning from California. Our planetarium is located at a community college. One of the primary missions of the community college system is to help students transfer to a university to obtain a degree. Non-science majors, the majority of our students in astronomy, will take only two collegiate level classes in science one in biology and one in physical science. Consequently, our astronomy students are typically taking their final, their terminal academic course in the sciences. It turns out about 200,000 students take basic astronomy in the United States every year. So while our primary content is astronomy, our work is distinctively positioned to influence the scientific worldview of non-scientists. Given that many of our students will go on to be teachers, voters, policymakers, we have a responsibility to educate our citizenry such that they are better able to make informed choices. Planetaria have long been known to generate inspiration, passion, and interest about astronomy, and they're one of our finest outreach tools for science literacy. We increase understanding and appreciation of science by telling our stories of discovery in a way that serves to nourish the spirit and change our worldview. In an era where scientific thinking is losing ground, planetariums become more important than ever. By this reasoning, investment in the planetarium is compelling. At West Valley College, we had some other compelling concerns, some practical concerns. While our campus planetarium solely hosts our astronomy classes, we wanted our investment to reach beyond the 15 or so classes that are taught annually. We desired to build a facility that would extend our influence beyond the astronomy classroom and bridge the gap between science and society. Therefore, we set a number of design goals to ensure the planetarium would stay relevant for the college and in the community. As we courted our donor, the Gene and E. Floyd Kwame Foundation, they found themselves in agreement with our priorities and their sensibilities. Budget limitations steered us to build a box-shaped building with a level floor. Still, we wanted the building to state astronomy spoken here. We accomplished this architecturally by placing an observatory dome on the roof. Funding for accessibility to the roof was out of the question, so our observatory will have to have totally robotic instruments and video feeds from the robotic instruments will be piped into the planetarium exhibit area or to the internet. As a scholastic institution, we felt we should be presenting a scientifically accurate sky and we should include a star projector that would produce a stunning sky along with a modern full dome projection system. While we were restricted to a level floor, we placed a 41 foot hyperdome with a five degree extension below the horizon at the front to increase the forward visual area. A hydraulic lift was specified for the star projector to be lowered when needed. Rather than squeeze as many occupants in as possible, we elected to only have one row of seats 
south of the center line of the theater. We hope that will give every visitor a grand view. We designed the space to be used for more than astronomical presentations, leaving ample space in front of the room for a lecturer or to accommodate live performance. To enhance music and theatrical performance, we specified a low noise air conditioning system. Inset in the stage floor are boxes with connectivity for microphones, monitor speakers, MIDI equipment. The same boxes support connections to power, video, the internet, and lighting control. In the planetarium theater, we installed some pan tilt zoom cameras. This will allow us to um, do a live lecture that can be projected on the dome or into the exhibit area or to a science lecture hall if we need to accommodate a larger forum. This design also supports the planetarium as a broadcast space that will obviously be beneficial during the pandemic. We have also mounted data projectors underneath the dome, two data projectors, which we can use to project whatever content we want to on the dome itself. For theatrical performance, we have 15 theater parabolic luminized reflectors mounted under and behind the dome. In the lobby exhibit area, we have limited square footage. We elected to do many of our exhibits with digital displays, two shown here, but there are five displays in five different thematic areas with the addition of a high resolution three by three video wall, which can be used to show the earth overlap with scientific data animated over time, other scientific visualizations, or to be utilized as a large monitor for presentations. We could say we installed a centerpiece exhibit of a Foucault pendulum, though we had to tuck it into a corner due to limited space. For freestanding exhibits to be developed later, we put power and internet connections in the floor and walls. We designed openings in the south facing wall to accommodate light from the sun to be turned into a sun painting, solar image and solar spectrum exhibits. The space is tall enough to accommodate a hanging model once we locate an appropriate one. We feel we've realized a planetarium space that will remain vital for years to come and fulfills our many goals. We will have a state-of-the-art facility for teaching astronomy and presenting scientific visualizations, but it will also allow students in our theater program, our music program, our commercial music program, who will be able to uh, use our 30.2 spatial surround system, digital arts and animation, as well as our computer uh, art and animation program. We also have programs in television and electronic media. All of these folks will be brought into the planetarium so that they can allow their students to work in a format that's different than a theater in a box or the rectangular format of a screen. We expect a high utilization for the space, including kindergarten through 12th grade and public programming. And we think that this will make the planetarium relevant for years into the future. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up real quick by just listing some reasons why planetariums uh, are still relevant. They fulfill our all important need for awe. You know, we go to national parks, the UN has, has designated world heritage sites. We go to Disneyland and Disney World because we want to be in awe. And there's few things that do that more than the night sky and when even our artificial skies can create such feelings. It's only healthy to feel awe. I'm reminded of Maya Angelou's remarks. I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Yeah. We are all right. masters of space and time. Planetariums are the perfect tool for asking the why of our existence. Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. 
our role in planetariums is to do that. Dennis Samopoulos gave me my first planetarium show in 1968. And it was one of the focuses that, it, that, that allowed me to just realize I needed to be in planetariums. Now, many people have not forgiven Dennis for this, but still, Dennis is one of the reasons because he made me realize the why I needed to be here on this planet. And our job as planetarium people is to allow that to happen with each member of our audience, that they have to know that they are indeed a child of the universe, as Jack Horkheimer would say, and have an unending obligation to understand and explore it. And our third reason, let me do that. Why am I not seeing? Third reason. There we go. Planetariums teach and inspire more than STEM. This is going to be controversial because I work with a lot of school systems and, and many planetariums in the United States, particularly uh, in school districts, uh, they're, they're always under attack to be closed by superintendents and, and by uh, principals. And the reason is, is that I've often been told that the activities that they do the STEM interactive activities, well, they're just, they could be done just as well in a dark classroom. And, and I, of course, I correct them as much as I can, but we have to realize that this is a double-edged sword. We need to be asking the question, what science can we teach that is difficult, if not impossible in the classroom? And that's what we need to be concentrating on. Our job is to inspire our students and their teachers be lifelong investigators of the universe. We should always be looking up and not down at school desks if we want to be relevant. As Dante said, the heavens are calling you and the wheel around you displaying to you their internal beauties and still your eye is looking on the ground. And, fun, and reason number four, we show what we are losing with every street light we turn on and every constellation of blinking satellites we launch. We are the preservationists, the Rachel Carsons, and the John Muirs of the sky. Everyone knows this quote, I hope you use it, if the stars should appear one night in a thousand years, how men would believe and adore and preserve the many gener for many generations, the remembrance of the city of God, which had been shown. But every night come out these envoys of beauty and light the universe with their admonishing smile. Another reason is the night sky is the ultimate Roshark test. It is, it is a study, it is a world planet study in comparative sociology and anthropology. And we see each of ourselves in the sky. Each culture sees itself. And yet by learning about all those, we realize that we're one people on one planet. And there's nothing more to, to creating, um, I think, human understanding than realizing the diversity of how we view things. But the more we do that, the more we realize that we are the same. As Shakespeare said, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves. And finally, we learn and remember more than we share when we share experiences together. All of us uh, in this pandemic have, have been stuck watching TV and, and watching uh, comedians with no audiences try to be funny. We've, we've, I don't know about you, but I, I long to go to restaurants and I long to go to museums and, and, and ball games and planetariums so that we can do something together. There's a lot of scientific evidence that says that everyone learns more when we learn things together rather than separately. A theater is a place where people go to sit in the dark to watch other people perform in the light, all to learn what it is to be human. A planetarium is a theater where the actors are the sun, moon, planets, stars, galaxies, and the people who study them. Our collective play is the universe tonight. It's eight hours. And these are just six reasons. And there are many I've heard during this conference. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our, our panel. Any questions you have, we have time. I'm certain that David and Benjamin would love to, to answer them.
and I guess I unshare. Right, thanks folks. It's now 15 hours UT, um, so it's our scheduled time to finish, but uh, if anybody has a quick question, um, uh, that'd be great. So, fire away. So uh, Jim had a question about budgets. So my planetarium is primarily funded um, by the students who take classes. So that's kind of covered, but everything else we do above and beyond that, that's, that's a, a, a question. We did have our donor give us a million dollars, which we've put into an endowment, but given the current economy, it's not generating a lot of interest. So we'll be able to do a limited amount of outreach with that. Uh, hopefully one day when the economy improves, it'll allow us to do more. Uh, obviously we're gonna have to, uh, like many planetariums do, charge a modicum uh, of an admission fee to help us get new content and such. So that's our, our present game plan. Okay, Tell us, thank you, Benjamin. Fortunate to have a generous board. Uh, of course, as any private nonprofit, we, we, we balance our books on uh, gate receipts, but uh, during our, the pandemic, when we usually see a thousand people a day through the museum, we now see about 150 to maybe 250. Uh, but fortunately, our, our board has supported us completely through all of this. David, is that because your attendance figures are, are limited because you're not allowed to have any more than that? Or is that just the natural number that are coming along? Uh, it's, it's, we're doing time ticketing and we're limiting the number of people that come in the building. So in our, our planetarium that we seat 120, we only allow 30 people in per show. Uh, and we've reduced the number of shows from eight shows a day to six to give our staff enough time to clean, to sanitize the seats uh, in between each show. Uh, so uh, um, that's just the reality we're living in right now. Sure. Uh, any other comments? I don't think there were any other questions I spotted during the chat, unless I missed something. A lot of very positive comments, which was wonderful. Uh, but does anybody have any last uh, comments or questions to, uh, to put to our presenters? No. I, I want to say one last thing is that before sure. the pandemic, there were more uh, planetariums being built or renovated than closing. Um, I don't know what's going to happen post pandemic, but I, I feel certain because of all the reasons that the panels presented that there will, the new normal will include planetariums of that we're all quite confident and we are still relevant. 